Hey, welcome back to Paramedic Project. Thanks for joining us once again. Dr. Paul Everett joining us for our final episode oh. on clinical handovers. And today, just going to go through an example of a clinical handover for a patient, a medical patient in an urgent medical state and then in an emergency as well. So uh, just to really illustrate the difference between handovers of these two types of patients. So yeah. let's go through this, the handover and the structure we've talked about, Paul. All right, so maybe we'll do a comparison on the urgent uh, situation versus the emergent situation. Yeah, sure. Let's talk about the situation first. Okay, so this is Mr. <laughs> Mr. Jones. He's a 73-year-old gentleman who's had CVA, TIA-like features recurring over the last month. He's called us today because he's uh, had a 30-minute episode of left arm weakness that's now resolved. Okay, so that's the urgent but not emergency uh, presentation for a 73 year old yep. male. Okay, what about the emergency? The same patient, but then in an emergency clinical state, the situation. So Mr. Jones is a 73 year old gentleman with an altered level of consciousness whose wife's called us because he had a dense left hemiplegia. I'm concerned that he's got an increasing intracranial pressure. Okay, so situation for Mr. Jones, 73 year old male, one of them suggestive of TIA, one suggestive of a hemorrhagic stroke. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so let's go through the entire handover for each of these patients now, just to really, uh, I suppose, round out this, uh, these episodes on clinical handover so we can really see the difference between what an urgent patient and an emergency patient looks like when we hand them over. Okay. Okay, Paul, so the, the urgent one first. So this is Mr. Jones. He's a 73-year-old gentleman who has had recurrent episodes of stroke or TIA-like features over the last month that have resolved. Okay. Today, he's called us his wife's called us because he had a 30-minute 30 30 episode of left arm weakness that's now resolved. Okay. He's on warfarin for his atrial fibrillation, and he has a history of hypertension. Um, and we've essentially examined him with a normal examination, normal power and tone, uh, and no clinical findings of note. Okay. Uh, we've made minimal interventions, and we've brought him up here for further assessment and ongoing care. Okay, so that's the S-bar mnemonic uh, for the urgent uh, Mr. Jones. What about the emergency Mr. Jones, the, the hemorrhagic stroke Mr. Jones, what does that look like? So this one's a little bit more punch in and certainly requires a lot more dot points to give the information. Okay. So Mr. Jones is a 73 year old gentleman with an altered level of consciousness and his wife's called us because he's got a dense left hemiplegia. I'm concerned because I feel he's got features of a rising endocranial pressure. He's got a background history of warfarin that he may have taken too much and he's also hypertensive, plus or minus some TIA-like features in the past. His GCS is 7, his eyes are 2, his verbal is 2 and his motor is 3. He's hypertensive at 200 systolic with a heart rate of 55. His airway has been patent and self-supporting at all times. He's got an 18 gauge in his right ACF and he's had 8 milligrams of IV on Dancitron. We've got an IV fluid line set up but it is not running. Okay. So great, so you can see there, definitely as you said, Paul's a little bit more punchy, a few more dot points mm -hmm. to really convey the, the, uh, the most important clinical points. And you can see it's not every piece of clinical information we have about Mr. Jones we convey. No, there's lots yeah. more stuff sitting in the background that yeah. does need to be communicated, okay. but not straight away. Alright, so you, you used a good phrase before, you said it's enough to get you up and running, yep. but... But we want to fill in the gaps later on, we just yeah. want enough information that we can start to treat Mr. Jones get his treatment priorities sorted, a plan of action, and then come back and fill in the gaps yeah. later on. And in, and in practice, this is what happens. We hand the patient over, um, the ED docs and the nurses get their hands dirty and start working with the patient uh, for the patient's welfare. And then uh, a few minutes later, so we come back and there are a few more questions that come our way about mm -hmm. our other clinical findings that, uh, that, that, that we had on scene. Yep. Yeah. Okay, it's been Paramedic Project, final episode on clinical handovers. Thanks for joining us. It's been Paul Everett. Mate, thanks for joining us, it's been really good. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Christian. Find us on social media, we'll see you next time.